Hey everyone, welcome. It is our third night together as I read to you Cat and Mouse in a Haunted House. And if you remember, last time we read together, Geronimo had seen something else scary appear in the castle, in the haunted castle. This time it was a witch. But instead of seeing the witch right in front of him live, he saw the witch's reflection, which means he saw a witch's image in a mirror. And his nephew, Benjamin, doesn't think that Geronimo's as crazy as he sounds. Benjamin has been looking for clues all over this house, and he thinks he might be figuring out what's really going on. So we're going to read the next chapter and see what happens, and if we can solve this case or not. All right. So, oh, sorry, one page. So this is where we ended right here. Geronimo is with Benjamin, and Benjamin loves him very much. He said, of course I believe you, uncle. I love you. All right, next chapter. Here we go. Small but nasty. Finally, Thea and Benjamin and Trap left. I sat on the bed by myself thinking, what is going on? Was I really just having nightmares like Trap said? Or was I really seeing a ghost, a mummy, and now a witch. I started feeling like I was losing my mind. So to cheer myself up, make myself feel better, I started chanting again. Everything's in control. Everything's under control. I chanted over and over again, but it didn't help me at all because nothing was in control right now. Oh, how I wished I was home. Suddenly, a gray owl flew into the room through an open window. It perched or sat on the edge of the fireplace. The owl opened up its little beak and it started to talk. Hey, you chatterface, it said. My jaw dropped. An owl that talks? And then the owl started to sing a creepy song. I may be small, but don't cross me. One wrong move in your history. <gasps> then all of a sudden, the owl phew, whirled away. In a whirl of feathers, all of its feathers started fly flying in the air. As the owl flew away, I heard a mechanical machine sound. Tick, 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 tick. How very strange, I thought. I wanted to tell someone about it, but whoever heard of a talking owl? And not just any talking owl. This one was a nasty talking owl. I opened my mouth to yell for help. And then <gasps> I kept it shut. Why bother? No one's going to believe me anyways. They never do. There's a close-up of the owl. All right. They just call me cheese brain. They call me a mad mouse, a crazy mouse. They'd call me for advice and do the exact opposite of what I said. No one would ever believe me. Well, no one except for Benjamin. So I scrambled out of bed and then I raced out of the room in search of my dear, sweet nephew. All right, he's gonna go tell Benjamin. Let's see what Benjamin thinks or what he does. The next chapter is called The Mystery of the Chicken Feather. I found Benjamin and told him what had happened. He listened patiently. Then he gave me a hug. I believe you, uncle, he said. Did I mention that Benjamin is my favorite nephew? We then we went back to Duchess Curly Paw Candy Cat's room. Benjamin began to check out the room like a regular mouse detective, looking for clues. He found a feather on the floor by the fireplace. He stared at it through his magnifying glass. Very interesting, he murmured. This looks like it was a white chicken feather, but someone has painted it gray. I told Benjamin about the strange mechanical noise I heard when the owl flew off. Tick, tack, tick, tack, tick, tack. He pointed out the cobwebs, the spider webs over the fireplace. So many cobwebs, yet not one spider. We both agreed this was very odd. With that, 
Benjamin pulled out his notepad, and then he began scribbling some more notes. At this rate, he was going to need a new no notepad very soon. All right, so Benjamin believes him. They found a clue. A white chicken feather painted gray, and that owl had gray feathers. And there was that weird noise, tick, 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 like a machine. Let's see what happens next. The next chapter is called A Scarlet Silk Cape. It was already morning, but it felt like midnight. Being haunted by ghosts was exhausting. I hadn't slept one wink. I decided to try and catch a quick mouse nap. I'd skip Curly Paw's room, though ugh, it's so cold in there. Instead, I climbed up the stairs leading to the highest tower. Soon I found myself in a red room. The walls were red, the floor was red, even the ceiling was red. I fell onto the bed. Ah, I was so tired. Before my fur even hit the red velvet pillow, I was fast asleep. A few minutes later, I woke up to a strange buzzing sound. I opened my eyes. I looked around. There were shadows dancing on the ceiling. Now remember what you know about shadows. Shadows are only created when there is light. Cheese niblets. Those weren't just any shadows. Those were bat shadows. There were bats flying on the ceiling. Oh, how I wished I was home. Suddenly, one of the shadows drifted over to the bed. It was much, much bigger than the others. The buzzing whirred whir in my ears. Just then, the shadow unfolded its wings, and I saw a figure cloaked in a scarlet silk cape. So figure is a shape. So he saw a shape covered in a cape, like a superhero cape, but it was the color red. It was a vampire cat. <gasps> It smiled at me, showing every one of its pointed teeth. A vampire! I shrieked. In a flash, it disappeared. The door flew open. Then there was Benjamin. Uncle, uncle, what's the matter? He cried as he raced by my side. Uh, I heard a buzzing sound, and I saw bat shadows on the ceiling. And then a vampire appeared at the foot. The bottom of my bed. <laughs> There's a picture of the vampire. Hmm. That vampire is a cat. Got a clue? Benjamin twirled his whiskers. Hmm. A buzzing sound, huh? Shadows on the ceiling. A vampire? Then he glanced out of the window. Look, uncle, the sun is already up, he pointed out. I thought vampires slept during the day and were up at night. Hmm, I wasn't an expert on vampires. I try not to read so many spooky books. They're just so scary. But I do know that Benjamin was right. Nighttime was a vampire's party hour, and daytime was for sleeping. Hmm. Benjamin discovered an, inst an extension cord lying on the floor. An inst extension cord is a cord that you use to plug in different things in your house. Like you might have one that has a microwave plugged in, maybe a light plugged in. And he held it up for me to see. Once again, we both agreed something odd was going on. How could there be bats in the daytime? And an, an extension cord? Benjamin took out his notepad and begins, began scrambling and scribbling away. There's his little notepad. He wrote an extension cord. He's got lots of clues. All right, this is going to be your last chapter before our pajama party tomorrow night. It's called Pranky Paws. I was still sleepy, but it didn't look like I would be catching any zzz tonight. Then... I'd curl up in my comfy bed when I got home and sleep for hours, maybe even days. I would just take a vacation from work. Lately, I've been working my bones to my paws to the bone. A little time off would be what I needed. I couldn't wait to get home. 
Oh, how I wished I was home. <gasps>